my name is Alex and I work for the New York Power Authority in the Environmental Justice Department. The Environmental Justice team and I want you to know that we're thinking of you and your families and we're excited to get back in the classroom, summer camps, after school programs, and more. We hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. While you're at home, there are still ways to have fun and learn about renewable energy. That is why we've created this video for you to follow. Here at NIPA, 80% of the power generated is from renewable resources, the main one being hydroelectricity. But today, we're going to explore a different renewable, solar thermal energy. If you would like to follow along in the activity portion of this video, you will need just a handful of items, most of them you probably have somewhere at home. There are many different forms of renewable energy. Can you name them all? Some of them include solar energy, wind energy, hydroelectricity, geothermal energy, and biomass. Solar energy is the radiant light and heat from the sun that is captured using different technologies. One type of solar energy is solar thermal energy. This captures the heat energy from the sun. We can use the sun's heat to heat other things, like our food. Solar thermal technology is different from solar power using photovoltaic cells, like ones you may see on top of schools or other buildings. Photovoltaic cells, or PV, converts the sun's radiation to electricity. There are many kinds of solar thermal systems, but they all have something in common. They capture the sun's heat for a purpose. Solar thermal systems can be used in people's homes for heating and cooking. For example, in a home solar thermal system, the system might use the sun's heat energy to heat water stored in the system to later use in showers, for cooking, or to keep the home warmer in colder months. Even larger systems can create electricity for many people on a commercial level. The largest solar thermal plant in the world is located in California and has a total capacity of 350 megawatts enough to power 105,000 Californian homes. These large commercial systems use many mirrors to concentrate solar thermal energy that will make it hot enough to turn water into steam, spinning a turbine that will power a generator that will then produce electricity. Solar thermal systems are classified as either passive or active. Passive systems often found in home use have no moving parts and are more basic than active systems and solely rely on design features to heat, like a greenhouse. Active systems, like the solar thermal plant in California, require moving parts, fans, mechanical systems to circulate heat or fluids in the system. Solar thermal energy is a clean, renewable energy and the passive systems have no moving parts and use simple technologies, which means low maintenance costs. Some drawbacks are the system's dependency on the sun's location and time of day and in some active commercial uses, large amounts of land may be required. In our activity today, we're going to build our own passive solar thermal system. Remember, passive systems have no moving parts and rely on design features to heat its contents. You will need the following items for today's activity. Cardboard, you can use a pizza box, a box from an online order, a shoe box, a tissue box, whatever cardboard you may have lying around. This is your base and walls for your solar oven. Aluminum foil, which will act as a reflector. Black construction paper, a material that absorbs heat. Cling wrap or plastic wrap, so heat can enter the oven but not escape. A cookie or other food that you can cook or melt. If you have a digital thermometer, you can use it to monitor your oven's temperature. If not, you will record any physical changes you see in your food. And lastly, these materials to help you build your solar oven and record your results. Remember, your solar oven works best if it is closed on all sides, contains a window to allow the heat from the sun to enter but not escape, is tightly sealed, lined with a material that absorbs heat, and there is at least one panel that will help reflect sunlight into your oven. Also, make sure you put your cookie or food and thermometer inside your oven before you seal it up. Now, you have 15 minutes to build your solar oven. Start a timer and meet back here once you're finished.
Great job. Now that your oven is finished, we're going to observe and record how well our ovens perform. On a scrap piece of paper, create a data entry table that looks something like this. If you do have a thermometer, you will record the temperatures your oven reaches. If you do not have a thermometer, write down any physical changes you see with your eyes in your data table. We are going to observe changes for nine minutes in our ovens. So first we will need to put our ovens in a sunny area. Today I'm going to put mine near the window. You can go outside even. Anywhere it's sunny and the sun will reach your oven. If it's rainy outside or cloudy, you may want to test your oven on another sunny day. First we will record our base temperature or we will record what our cookie or other food looks like. Then we will start our timer and every three minutes we will record the changes in our table. Great job, here are my results. I think my oven did pretty well. Between the start point and the three minute mark, my oven really heated up quickly. From then on, it still kept getting hotter, but not at the same rate. My cookie is definitely warm and the chocolate has melted quite a bit. If I did this over again, I would change the aluminum foil portion of my oven so that it was directed more towards the opening. And I would make the opening in the top of the box larger so that there was more of an opportunity to try heat. So, how did your ovens work? Did they work how you wanted them to? Did you see a dramatic temperature increase like I did at first? Did your cookie or food melt? What were some things you would have changed about your oven? Send in your results along with a picture of your oven to our email address. We would love to see how you did. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had fun. Check back for more STEM videos soon. Thanks, bye.